Hello. Okay, so right now I'm going to show how easy it is to use SolidWorks, uh, how we can emulate the functions found within family uh, family tables in uh, Pro Engineer, and how really SolidWorks is a, a bit more refined, uh, easier to use, and a lot easier to transfer data and manipulate uh, this data. It's really geared towards ease of use. So just wanted to show that uh, today. I have a finished part here, and after I show uh, kind of this finished part, I'm going to walk through how I got here and really just show uh, how easy it is to take your parts from Pro Engineer into this format in SolidWorks. Um, so I just have kind of a foam example part here, and uh, I did create uh, a design table, which is very similar to uh, a family table or family tree. And uh, we can see that it's it's bent here with a hole in it, and I can very easily select from the same file uh, different, uh, we call them configurations, so different configurations of this same file. Um, I can have a hole, I can have a flat with a hole, I can make it a little bit uh, thicker if I want, thicker or thin. I can have a thick without hole, a thick with hole. So really just a bunch of different um, different configurations and different ways of viewing this. And it's all driven off of just uh, an embedded uh, Excel uh, table right in, uh, right in SolidWorks itself. So it's important to note that in SolidWorks, uh, Excel is actually part of SolidWorks. It's not a separate file that you always have to worry about keeping track of, uh, emailing to people, storing. Uh, there's none of that. It's all contained right in the one file of SolidWorks. So you see when I actually open my design table, you can actually see Excel open inside of SolidWorks. And these are all of my uh, fields you know, that are changing, really easy to set up. But it's just really important to note that this is one file I'm dealing with, not uh, not separate Excel files and separate part files. So it's a very efficient way to manage uh, all your data. So it's very easy to get to this point from Pro Engineer, and I'll show how to do that uh, right now. So to create something like this, we can actually open directly uh, pretty much any file type especially ProE uh, files. So we see the ProE file here that we want to open. I don't have to go to any special import or read data or any weird settings. It's just file open. So it's very, very easy to just open any file type. So just file open. And I'm going to go ahead and select this ProE part file. As soon as I do that, SolidWorks is going to recognize it's a ProE and Creo part file, and it's going to give me a couple uh, options that I can actually uh, select to further refine how I open it. Now it can just import the geometry just as a dumb solid, but really SolidWorks can actually analyze the geometry and extract some of the sketches uh, directly from it. So we're going to do that, analyze the model completely, and select OK. So it found a couple of features that it can go ahead and recognize in here. So I'm just going to let it do that. And we see that it brought in, you know, the basic shape, uh, the basic foam shape here, uh, right directly from ProE. We can see in SolidWorks it fully recognizes the import. It understands that it's a boss extrude. It understands there's a sketch uh, driving it. So this is a full SolidWorks part. This is not just a dumb file. It's actually a full SolidWorks part with uh, the sketches and construction lines, geometry, and everything read in directly from the ProE file. And we can actually see SolidWorks uh, already kind of putting some of these uh, relationships in here already. So I'm just going to finish it up real quick by adding one extra construction line to it uh, just to make it symmetrical on the top and on the bottom. I'll just add a couple quick dimensions here so I can control these. I'll call this this uh, length right here. 
So all I'm doing here is I'm just naming the dimensions as I put them in. Um, so that way it's very easy when I create that Excel file uh, to understand what dimensions I need to change. So you can see now if I click on this, it actually is the dimension length. And if I click on this dimension, it's the dimension width. So it's very, very easy to rename any dimensions that you need. And then it'll be very clear to you uh, what you're going to need to change uh, later on uh, in order to very easily modify this part. I'll make this one one last one. I'll call this the height. So now I have a width, length, and a height that I can fully play with. Now I notice there is a hole uh, that we wanted to recreate. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in a hole that we can also play with. Again, if you notice, I'm using what's called mouse gestures to make this very easy and simple uh, to add in holes, to add dimensions. Mouse gestures really speeds up everything and really keeps your mouse at the center of the screen. So now that I have a nice hole in the middle there, I'll just rename this to be hole. <laughs> Again, just to make it easy for me to understand what's going on when I create that Excel file. So I have all this set up, and I also notice that sometimes it is flexed. It's kind of bent around uh, a cylinder. So I can do that very easily just by typing in flex in my search tool up here. And this will be able to run any command that I want. So type in flex and click on it and it'll start the flex command. So all I really need to do is type in which direction I want it to curve and how many degrees I want it to wrap around. Very, very easy uh, to do this. And we can see now that we've actually stretched this part as if it's wrapped around uh, this, this sort of a, a barrel. This is the radius data down here. So we see it's a 1.1 inch radius. If I wanted, I could of course change that, you know, to fit around different uh, different sizes. But uh, so it's very very easy uh, to do this. I've got everything set up now that I need, and at this point, all I have to do is ask SolidWorks to create a design table for me. So to get started, I'm just going to flip to configurations, and all I'm going to do is create three, uh, actually two configurations. Uh, one called flat, and I'm going to right click again. I'm going to call one curved, if I can spell right, curved with hole. And really, all this is doing is this is just uh, allowing me to go and, uh, and change some of the parameters. So, if I want this configuration to not be, be bent, not be flexed. Uh, I can do that, and maybe I'll call this one no hole. So when I flip over to this, I can take away the, the hole uh, on that one. So now I have three configurations, very easy uh, to do. So I've got a curved with hole, I've got a flat, and I've got a no hole. So we can flip through them manually if you want to see. But uh, this is the basic building blocks of our design table. So again, very, very easy to get to this point uh, in SolidWorks, reading in the data, single file, and then just adding a, a couple of quick steps to, to get to this point. And from this point on, it's really easy to, to create uh, as many more of these uh, scenarios, these configurations as we want. I could have uh, 100 at this point, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So all I'm going to do is go up to Tools and ask it to put in a design table for me automatically. So we'll go to Tables and add a design table. We can automatically create the design table. Again, there's no manual work required for us. It can automatically do this. We just tell it what we want it to do. And again, Excel is embedded directly into SolidWorks. So when we do this, it'll automatically add this Excel file right into SolidWorks. So it's one file type. So I'm just going to go ahead and edit that uh, table there for us. So now we can see 
that we've got uh, Microsoft Excel opened, and uh, we've got a no hole, a flat, and a curved with hole. I'll just go ahead and shrink this to fit uh, neatly within uh, within SolidWorks here. I'm just going to bring it up in its own window here. It's going to be a little bit easier uh, to see. So again, we've got all of these things. If we do want to add, uh, say, a width, so if we want to make the thickness a little bit thicker on some designs and a little bit thinner on others, uh, it's not a problem at all. All that we have to do is select a new cell and then just simply click on any dimension we want. So again, this is the width, this is the length, and this is the height or thickness. So if I click on this dimension, we can see it automatically brings in that value to Excel. So again, since Excel is part of SolidWorks, I can just click on fields and have them automatically imported right into Excel. So we can see that the value is 0.188, and this is read again directly from, um, from Pro E. So maybe I'll keep that constant with all of these configurations. And maybe I want uh, three more, so a total of six configurations, and I want them to go up to maybe 0.35 inches for these three. So everything else is going to stay the same, suppressed uh, features and everything. But I'm just going to create three new ones, and I'm going to just call them thick, no hole. I'm going to call this one thick, flat, and thick, curved with hole. Again, you can have it automatically name it for you, um, but I like to just kind of add my own personal touch and, and put the thick uh, right in front of it, if I can spell correctly. So notice what happens as soon as I click out of Excel, I click back into the SolidWorks environment, because again, Excel and SolidWorks, they're one and the same. So as soon as I click out, SolidWorks understands, oh, Excel has now told me to create three new parts. Again, contained within the one part, so it's really just one part file, but there's three different configurations, three versions of it. Thick, no hole, thick, flat, and thick, curved, with hole. So when I click OK, notice what happens here in the left corner. It's going to automatically create these three new versions of the file for me. And if I want to go and select one of them, all I have to do is click on the thick one. See how it automatically makes it a thicker version. So this can be done and leveraged uh, across any dimension. You could make the width uh, different different widths. You could have the height. You could have there a hole or not hole, curved or not curved. And now that you've set up this part, it's as simple as just going into the design table, adding a couple new features, telling it what you want and what you don't want, and it's going to automatically create all of those files for you. And again, it's very important to note that this is all contained within one single part file. There's no excess Excel files. There's no links that you have to worry about. It's just one file. You can copy and paste it, email it, save it into a new folder, and all of this intelligence, all six of these, or all 60, of these uh, different versions of the part are all going to come across with it. So it's a really powerful tool uh, that SolidWorks can bring in different types of data, especially Pro-E. We work really well with that. And to create these design tables for you automatically uh, from your existing data. Uh, customers have really found a huge increase in productivity, in error reduction, because all the files are kept together and just really an ease of use. It's easier to teach people how to do this. It's easier to remember yourself how to do everything because uh, Excel is a part of it and everything is automatic along the way. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, just a quick, I guess, tutorial on how SolidWorks can bring in Pro-E data and automatically create a bunch of different versions of it automatically all contained in the same file. Thank you and have a good day.